Guys, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining me in the garage today. This is my 2023 Tesla Model Y long range. I also have my 2015 Tesla Model S. I want to talk about Tesla charging, specifically a few questions that have been asked to me. I've done a few charging videos in the past, but I want to just cover some basic information that might help those who are new to Tesla, who are considering a Tesla, and that want to learn kind of all the basics of charging. All right, so I'm in the garage. I have the car parked here. It's been plugged in overnight. Now, one of the things that I've always uh, talked about in my previous videos is I did a video about the ABCs of charging is to always be charging, always have it plugged in. Now, this is the Tesla wall connector that I have. I have two of these in my garage, one for each of my cars. If you can see that it's plugged in, this actually does not charge the car. This is, this is called the wall connector. The charger for the, the battery pack is inside the car, which is pretty cool. All this thing is doing is this is just a fancy extension cord that's giving power, 240 volt power, and I have a 50 amp breaker so I can charge at 40 amps, but it's, all it is is simply just giving power into the, bat, the charger that's on board the car. Whenever I'm home, I'm in the garage, or the car's parked here, I always keep it plugged in. Now, here's, here's the thing I wanna point out, and this was the, one of the questions I keep getting from, from people, is you see the, uh, the illuminated blue light here? When it's just blue like this, and I've got a green mark on the car like this, that means that I've reached my charge limit, the car is fully charged up to the charge limit, and it's not currently charging. So when I say always be charging, I always keep this plugged in so that way I'm always charged up to the charge limit. All right, I'm inside the car. This is the point, this is one of the points I wanna make in the video here. And that is you have an adjustable charge limit. So if you just go to the charging screen, so if you just hit the vehicle button here, it brings up the menu, go to charging. This is where you can set your charge limit for the car. So I usually keep this around 80, 75 to 80% on a regular basis. If I'm going on a long trip, like of last week I went on a, a, a kind of a longer road trip, I had it charged almost up to 100%, so I have the maximum range. So for daily use, Tesla recommends between 50 and 80%. So I can bring this all the way down to 50. See it says charge on at 50%. So I can bring it down to 50%, all the way up to 100%. And you can kind of see this graph here. For daily use, up to 80%. Trips, you can go up to 100% just fine. So I'm gonna bring it back down to 80%. When Even though the car's plugged in, once it reaches the, the set limit that I have here, it stops charging. So you're not wasting electricity. It's not overcharging the car. You can't really overcharge this. The, the charger on board here is really smart. You can also choose the amperage. So see mine says maximum 40 amps. Well, my, my wall connector is set on a 50 amp breaker and you're really only supposed to safely charge at 80% of the breaker limit. So 80% of 50 is 40. The max amperage is 40 that I can do on this, but I usually do this about 32 amps. If I'm down at 20% and I have the limit set at 80% overnight, even at 32 amps, it'll it'll charge up to that just fine. I can choose that and then it'll save for this location. So if at your home you only wanna charge up to 30, 32 amps or 40 amps, you, it'll save that for that location. So here I am on the app. You can do all this from the app as well. So if I go into the app and you can see here I'm under the, uh, this main screen here, I can do the same thing. I can change this up to 100%, 80%, 60%, whatever you need for the next day, you can change the charging percentage. I just keep mine at 80% and always keep it charged up to 80%, so that way I don't really have to worry about not charging the car or the car's not ready. So under the app, when you go into schedule, you can do different schedules. You can do you can set a time that you depart, so you, it will precondition the battery. So let's say I want to depart at 8 a.m. every morning, and that's my usual departure time. I can go on here, I can set that, I can do all week, I can, I can just do weekdays. So that way it'll be preset to heat the battery, to set the climate control inside the car. And then you can also do off-peak charging. So this is something if you have different electricity rates overnight versus during the day. Some utilities or electrical companies will have cheaper power during nighttime hours versus during the day. Under charge, you can also do schedule charging, and that means you can start charging, let's say you wanna do 10 p.m. or midnight or 1 a.m. or whenever. That would, that's also something that would help keep you out of the peak charging rates, so that way you can get the cheapest electricity when you're charging at home, for example. So there's some cool ways to maximize your charging, your rates, preconditioning the car, as well as making sure you're, you're paying the least amount for electricity. For example, I just got out of the car to show you the screen. When I get in the car, the car turns on and electricity, you know, it starts using electricity to, to heat the, 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 the cabin or use the climate control. This will turn on to help maintain that 80% charge on the battery. 
And so that's why I always like keeping my car plugged in because overnight the car might need to heat or cool the battery and use some of the power from the battery to heat and cool the battery. If you have it plugged in, it's gonna help keep it at that percentage. So that way you don't come out and you're now, you set it at 78 or 80% and now it's at like 76% overnight because it had to heat or cool the battery pack. So another cool part with keeping it charged at like, let's say, for, for example, I choose 80% for my cars. I keep all my cars 80% all the time. The cool thing with that, this Model S only has a range of when it's fully charged, like 225, 230 miles total. At 80%, that's like 275, 276 miles of range. That, might, that may not sound like a lot, but that's really per trip. So for example, if I drive, for example, let's say I'm, I take my car, I've got a client meeting, I go and drive, I drive 10 miles, I, I come back to my home, I work from home, I come back to my home office, I plug it right back in, and in probably 20 minutes, I now have that, that 10 miles of range that I, that, that I used back into the battery. And then if I have to go on another trip, I've got, that, I've got a full 176 miles to go. So I always have 80% in my battery. So if I have to go five different trips throughout the day, and maybe I drove 30, 40 miles total, by the end of the day, I'm still gonna have 177 miles in the, in, the, in the car because I'm always keeping it plugged in whenever I'm at home. So that way, if something comes up and I've got like a long trip or I've gotta go you know, 50, 60, 70 miles each way, I've got the car, it's ready to go. I don't have to worry about stopping at those public chargers. So tip number one is really just, just get the charging set up at your home or in your garage or wherever you're gonna be parking there, get the charging set up before you get the car. You wanna have that all ready to go before you get the car so that way you're not scrambling, you're not having to use public charging or taking the car somewhere. It's just gonna make the easiest experience possible. So get the Tesla wall connector or get the mobile connector and plug it into the NEMA 1450 plug. That's probably the cheapest route because the mobile connector is 230 bucks and then you, I got the, my NEMA 1450 plug installed in my house for $300. So for just over $500, you'll have your charging all set up, which is a, which is a pretty reasonable price. The wall connectors are nice if you're gonna be using it outside. Uh, they're a little more weatherproof. You can approve which cars are using it so you can kind of monitor the usage a little bit. So if the car is outside, parked outside, and you're charging outside, and you don't want other cars using your plug, your, your charging connector, the Tesla wall connector has some settings where you can only allow certain cars to use your, 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 uh, your charging plug. And then the second tip, really keep the car plugged in whenever, you're, whenever it's parked, even if it's not charging. Whether you need a charge or you don't, get into the habit of just plugging it, plugging it in every time you pull into your garage or into your driveway or on the side of your house, wherever you're parking it, keep it plugged in all the time. Use the scheduled charging, use the departure charging times, and use the off-peak charging times. So another step before you get your car, call your local utility company that provides the electricity at your home. Ask them if there's any special rate programs. How does it work if you have an electric car? Is it cheaper to charge overnight versus during the day? Find out what that is, and then you can adjust your charging when, if you set the scheduling based on those numbers. As an example, it's no cheaper for me to charge at, 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 at during the day it is at night. So that's why I always keep my car plugged in, and that's why it's always charging back up to my 80%, because it's the same price for electricity for me, whether it's during the day or whether it's at nighttime but that may not be the case in your situation. And then the fourth tip, if you're going on a long road trip, always charge my car up to 100% when I'm going on a long road trip, so that way I have the maximum range to start off with, and then I can use the supercharger network as I'm traveling to get my range back up to where I need it to continue my trip. Guys, the charging aspect of an electric car is the best benefit of it. That's what makes it more distinctive than a gas, gas or a diesel vehicle, is you don't have to worry about stopping at gas stations. You don't have to worry about filling it up. It can always be filled up at your house. You do the refill basically at your house. That's the whole advantage to it, but that's also the most unique thing to it. So knowing just the basics of just keeping it plugged in, keeping it at 80%, having the charging set up at your home, in your garage, and always having it plugged in, that's just gonna make the ownership experience so much more enjoyable on this car and you trust me you will not miss going to the gas station all right guys well thanks for watching the video if you have any more tips for new tesla owners or things that you wish you would have known before you bought your tesla leave them down in the comments below so we can all can enjoy those be sure to hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching